to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show and the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m and Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex the Car Girl Rogio, Hot Rod Bob Beck, Plus, Dar Hawthorne, and Donnie Couch. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Speed Scene, coming to you live and direct high atop the Speed Scene studios in beautiful downtown <laughs> North Hollywood, California. With us tonight, as always, is our very special host, Lucky. Great to be here. Man, I am looking forward to this show tonight. How about you, Bob? Bru uh, Bruce? Uh, what's your Mill? name, what, what's your name over there? One of those B-words. Just don't yeah. call me most of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. Bruce Barker, always there on the board, helping <laughs> us get things going. And we have got a show that is packed with information tonight for you, as usual. And, uh, you know, we've got this uh, video from Barona. It's the Match Race Madness, courtesy of, Motor, courtesy of Motor Peak Motorsports. 36 pairs, pairs, I can't speak to that. I must have brushed my teeth and I can't do a thing with them. You're obviously a I professional know. announcer. Yep, 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 yep. Man, it was a great event, too. All it kinds was. of cool races, cool matches, perfect weather, tons of people out there. Yeah, 36 pairs of cars, imports versus domestics. Great event. Next event is in August at Barona Drag Strip. And uh, we're going to be talking to Steve Sherman a little bit later about that, aren't we? That's hey. right, we are. And coming up in June, there's going to be a huge race out at the Auto Club Fontana called the West Coast Classic Bracket Race. That's mm. going to be June 12th through the 14th. Uh, hopefully it'll be the first of many. It's sort of patterned after the Spring Fling Race at Las Vegas. And you know, they just announced at the Las Vegas Race that next year, 2016, they're going to call it the Spring Fling Million. They're going to have a million dollars in cash and prizes. Wow. The, the winner is going to take home a check for 100 k The runner-up is going to take 50k home Ooh. plus a ton of other stuff. So there's a lot going on. Hey, I just saw the Shermanator on the on the screen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, May 14th through the 17th, Great Bend SRCA Drag Strip in Kansas. They've got that big NHRA divisional that you've probably been keeping an eye on. Great track, great people, all concrete, good food too for reasonable prices. So uh, hey, man, that's a plus plus. And some of the nicest racers around not only show up there but run the place. So you, that rocks. You know, they give you free power. You don't have to run oh. a generator. They have plugs for you to plug in your RV, charge your battery. You walk around at night after the race. There's none of this humming. It's just quiet. The sound mm. of kids playing in the grass. It's just fantastic. But, uh, hey, uh, Bob, I yep. hear you're looking for a special someone. You bet. <laughs> To, uh, <laughs> to be on the show, oh, that oh, fan oh, of, the, oh, uh, yes, of your yes, Great yes. American Auto Scene uh, segment. You're right. In June, we're going to have some special segments where we're going to spotlight sportsman racers. Not the ones that necessarily are uh, in the limelight all the time, but we're going to try and pick on some people. Uh, not pick on some people. We're going to highlight and talk to some people <laughs> that are racing or hot rodding. Now, remember, my gas segment doesn't always deal with racing. True. So we're, gonna, we're looking for someone. I need to. I need you to go to my Facebook page. Could be a, a car show guy. Could, that's right. It could be a, a Maverick owner. It could be anything. Oh yeah, especially the Maverick owners. We're gonna. But <laughs> what you need to do is you need to contact me through Facebook on gas G period A period A period S. Go to that site on Facebook. Post your name, your pictures of your car, and you, and uh, we'll randomly pick three people to be on the show in June. Bob, what else are you going to talk about tonight? Tonight we're going to talk about a great show that happens every year. It's a charity show put on the Edelbrock Foundation at Edelbrock's headquarters in beautiful downtown Torrance, California. Nice. So we're going awesome. to see uh, some images, I would assume, some of the yes. cool cars, as well as uh, yes. what the event's all about. That you bet. We'll, we'll talk to someone from Edelbrock about that. Well, Excellent. that's great. Well, listen, let's introduce our special guests. We have two people that are involved in not only Sport Compact, but all different types of racing and uh, they represent a company busymoto.com and you know this is a company that does research and development and w when you talk to them really their focus is making your dreams come true they have the ability to take your vehicle turn up the power make it into whatever you want it to be so let's welcome I'd like to welcome uh, BC and uh, Hetty from bcmoto.com welcome to the show Hi. thank you 
Good evening. Good evening. BC, you've been well known for a long time for being uh, one of the foremost sport compact racers. You were uh, campaigning an all motor car for a long time, uh, very successfully. But really, it seems like even though you race uh, an all motor car, your forte has somehow become the turbo world. That is correct. Force induction seems to be the hot item nowadays in motorsports. I mean, you think about it. When it comes to efficiency and things that you can do to make cars extremely powerful and reliable, and people love power, racers love power, people tend to go towards turbocharging. I, for one, I love the path less traveled. I love the excitement, the challenge of natural aspiration. But you know what? I must do what my customers desire, and they love turbocharging. <laughs> now, is your car still naturally aspirated, or have you switched over to the turbo? Well, for my Honda Insight, my 2006 Pro Stock Insight is still naturally aspirated, but almost every other vehicle in my stable is either single or twin turbocharged. Everything from my Honda Odyssey all the way down to, I have a, a quite a few Porsches that are twin turbocharged. It seems to be you know, the hot ticket nowadays, and I'm uh, making my customers happy by uh, following suit. Now, now you've got an insight. Uh, that was a little was thousand, I mean, what was it, a thousand cc car originally? <laughs> and, you know, it, it couldn't get out of its own way unless it was going downhill, but it got excellent fuel mileage. What have you done to this little beast? Well, you know, that insight is something when I first laid eyes upon was a perfect race car. An impeccable coefficient of drag. It was at the time the lowest coefficient of drag commercially available vehicle period. You're kidding. And it was just, it was screaming for something more powerful. So I removed the three cylinder hybrid engine, <laughs> impregnated, yes, impregnated, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> a very nice 2.2 uh, two liter Honda Accord engine, which I didn't oh. stroked up to 2.4 plus. Mm. And now it is a joy. I mean, the car is fantastic, it's fast, aerodynamic, extremely aerodynamic, very powerful. Hey, last time I was out at Barona, we, we clicked off a 580 in the eighth mile. That oh, was really exciting. That's you know? fast. Hey, is this a, didn't Bob Godfrey paint this car? Yes, he did. Bob yeah. Godfrey painted my first CRX, <laughs> which is the car that uh, kind of paved the way for me to really get involved in motorsports. And it was a very popular car for me. You know, right. it's interesting. Back when you were racing this car so much, uh, everybody was switching over to the, uh, the uh, B16 and the K20 motors. And you were using a motor that a lot of people weren't using. However, you said this, really, I don't know why people don't look at it, because the design is excellent, and you backed up what you said by being one of the fastest guys out there. Absolutely. When I was a student in school, the single cam engine that came in my car was the only thing that I had access to, and due to sheer economics, it was the limiting factor for me. However, as I graduated from engineering school, got a great job in pharmaceutical research, and so I make some money, I found this engine, this single overhead cam engine out of the Accord, the heads were absolutely impe impeccable. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, the way to make power with a natural aspirated car or engine is to get as much flow as possible into that combustion chamber through the head. So you find a good flowing head, which the F22A amazingly has one. And it also was a great way for me to showcase our talents at BC Motor Engineering. I took an engine that was unloved, mm -hmm. took it apart, designed everything for that engine everything from the intake manifold down to rods pistons valve train you name it and we pretty much created a market for that engine and now it is a it's an engine that people tend to fear and respect which is fantastic that's got to be a real twerky motor with that much uh, size absolutely it's, it's great i mean right now i'm making over 430 wheel horsepower with that setup <laughs> with an engine that originally came with 130 horsepower so wow. it, it's it's wonderful and, and just technology is something i embrace and something that's allowed me to do extraordinary things with the market well with a single overhead cam too you're not uh, looking for the high reaches of the rpms you can get the rp you can get the power at a little lower rpm than on a twin cam that is correct however because of our displacement handicap you do want to buzz this engine to make the power mm -hmm. i mean the red line on that engine was originally about 64 6500 rpms i take my engine now to 10,700. Wow. That is wow. twin cam zone. Yes, so it, it is in the stratosphere, per se. Now, uh, uh, Eddie, we've got a lot to talk about tonight with the car and everything oh, that's I love going cars. on. Don't worry. Well, I, I, know, I know you do. You're at the races, you're, you're with them every time he's racing. But uh, I want to ask you a little sure. bit about your company, BZ Moto, because sure. it seems like over the years your company has really evolved from 
a, uh, a, a racer that's uh, designing and fabricating parts to being a full-service company Understood. that people can bring their cars, whether it's a Sport Compact or it's a Porsche or, or really anything, and you can create horsepower, and, and you're kind of the, the, responsible for the growth of the, the company as well as BC. Sure. Everybody at our facility, um, one common thing that we believe in is that we are true enthusiasts in it that we are car people. We don't say car guys or car girls, we say car people because mm -hmm. everybody there, we, we're truly passionate about what we do. I like and that. Thank you. And from that, uh, it comes naturally the, the wanting to improve, the wanting to learn more, the wanting to just do more with what we're passionate about. And so hence we um, started off with Honda, a single cam Honda Insight engine you know, we're the underdogs. Nobody loved us. It was like, <laughs> oh my God, what are you guys doing? It's like the David and Goliath story. And so from there, we wanted to prove what we can do with an unloved, um, I, I would like to say bastard and bastard child engine. And from there, we took it to other things. And a lot of people started noticing that. And they were like, wow, these people can make the same amount as a twin cam, you know, engine at that time what else are they capable of doing you know and when back going back to what bc was talking about and you were mentioning about the torquiness and whatnot you know with the twin cam engines they had the liberty to design their intake and exhaust lobes and play with different you know timing and whatnot but with a single cam it's on one one cam so it's really difficult to really get that precision and we've I think we've mastered that so make a long story short um, we have gotten clientele from anywhere from Porsches to crazy sand rail people from back east wanting us <laughs> to build <laughs> the single cam engine to put into their sand rails and which uh, is a big market now yeah. understood it's yeah. huge the, and you know and what's funny is that at one point in the business um, I would call my clients would be like maybe three years later and I go hey what's going on I haven't heard from you or some of my clients five years that have purchased an engine crate engine from us or engine build and I go hey what's going on they go well we're still running the same engine we did back then so That's thank good. you yeah, <laughs> so they good. right and they referred a lot of people to us so our motto is reliable power guaranteed um, our business was based off of the true passion of wanting to go fast and have people really enjoy their motors and what they want and we're able to figure it out so you can throw anything at us I mean we build crazy stuff we work with OE manufacturers we built a thousand horsepower Honda Odyssey minivan that oh and we're gonna see that <laughs> in a little bit. We're, yeah we've Perfect. got that coming Perfect. up now now uh, BC you know there's a lot of guys like me that really have no formal training that just sort of started working on cars because well we started breaking cars and no one else <laughs> would fix it so you know uh, i use the term shade tree mechanic a lot you know guys that just work out of their garage but you actually have a very solid uh formal training with a scientific background and a lot of your thinking i think comes out of that you look at things analytically and you figure out ways around problems that maybe other people wouldn't see. Tell us a little bit about that background. Well, I, I am a chemical engineer, um, and you may say, okay, wait, wait a minute, BC. Chemical engineering, cause, how does it go together? As a matter of fact, the chemical engineering curriculum gave me a very strong foundation in doing what I do today. Because chemical engineers typically take you know, raw materials and design components to make that into useful products. And if you think about the engine, the internal combustion engine that we all love. There, it's nothing but a glorified energy <coughs> converter. It takes the chemical energy of, you know, air or the oxygen in the air and the fuel, and then converts it to mechanical energy via heat of combustion. And that mechanical energy is what allows you to propel the car to improve power and go faster. So being able to harness those concepts, being able to optimize things, allows us the opportunity to do extremely well and to create wonderful products. Now. On the same token, if you come to BC Motor Engineering, we have a, a variety, I would say, uh, a great team of both engineers and, believe it or not, your shade tree mechanics. Guys like me, yeah, yeah, wrench because, twisters. Yeah, wrench twisters, because, you know, I'm the kind of individual who, you know, despite my background in engineering, I really am open-minded. I learn from everyone. I can learn from an infant. I can learn from an elder. I'm all about learning and improving, and my whole team is like that. So we have a lot of variety in thought when it comes to BCM engineering, and that really sets us apart from other organizations out there. And one of the reasons why OEs love us so much 
whenever there's an opportunity for a major manufacturer to want to appeal to either the youth market or to, let's say, the exotic marketplace, they come to be some engineering. We build a very exciting vehicle for them, and they use the campaign and push the brand. Well, and we'll it get works extremely well. We'll get back into that and talk a little bit more about your OE involvement. But first, I'd like to uh, go to the phone because we've got some people that, that of course, we've got people on the phone.com that are asking me questions on the laptop. But uh, Bruce, why don't you bring up Brian on line one, and he has a tech question for BC. Brian, welcome to Speed Scene Live. Hi there. How's it going? We're doing good. I hear you got a question for BC. I do. Um, uh, I'm not sure if he remembers me. I've gotten a vehicle too from him. But hey, how are you doing, Busy? Fine. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. I'm Excellent. good. I have a question for you, pal. Sure. I have a 20-valve Corolla. I'm running ITBs off a trigger wheel setup, Beautiful. and it has a Ford, uh, a Ford crank positioning sensor. Okay. My issue is recently, uh, in an unfortunate event, the plug got pulled out by a, you know, by pretty much by by force. And now when I plug it in directly, the, the, pretty much the pins were pulled out of the plug and uh, the wire was pulled out. So now I just soldered uh, the wires onto the, the pins themselves and I plugged them in and it won't turn over. I know it shouldn't it be either, either one way or another uh, fine to plug it in because it's a magnetic source, so it's just looping the energy. Yeah, with a v I, yeah, absolutely. With a VR sensor, it shouldn't be a challenge at all. Now, the one thing you do have to do is scope it because that will tell you if you're getting a clean signal or not from your crank pickup. So that being mm -hmm. said, that's the first thing I would do. Um, if you're not getting a clean signal to your ECU, definitely something's awry with your contacts and something you should look into definitely because sometimes, and I've done a mistake myself, I've solder something and the contacts are not just what they need to be. And push come to shove, you may have to replace the sensor and the wiring. But a scope would tell you so much and it's something that is really my best friend in my facility is the oscilloscope. Um, you, there are many handheld ones nowadays that are very efficient that can allow you to be able to rectify or uncover what's going on with your, with your, um, with your setup as you speak. You, you said scope it? How, how would I do that? I'm sorry. When you well, mean like an ohmmeter? Or? Yeah. Well, actually, an ohmmeter is too simple. There's an oscilloscope that you can use, and you'll be able to tap into the terminal itself and look at the tracing, and you can be able to see the wave pattern that's being formed on the oscilloscope. A lot of people are thinking yeah. oscilloscope, that's old school. That was what <laughs> the, we used to use to, to tell if a spark plug was firing correctly. So, uh, mm -hmm. to test vacuum tubes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now, now you're you're back to using oscilloscopes, and this is an electronics issue. Yes, that is correct. Right, that is correct. Okay. Wait, would you say that there's a, there's a, a slight chance that the sensor could be ruined because of this? Um, the scope will tell you. Once again, as as you tap into the leads and crank over the engine, and look at and you don't see a signal coming out of it, you know something's awry, and you can begin to, and you may see it at the sensor itself, but then when you go to the other end of your wire, maybe near the ECU, you may not see a signal. Then you know something's going on with your connectors. So it's a process okay. of elimination. That's the first thing that, we, that you should do, and it's what I would do um, in your case okay. of yours. And that would tell you quite a bit, and then allow you to, to explore the process of elimination and rectifying the issue you're having. Okay. Okay, well, great. Thank you. My pleasure. Sounds like good advice, huh, Brian? No, always. That's why I, that's why I called. <laughs> yeah, how handy. You could talk to a smart guy, get his opinion, find out how he would address it. Boom, you're back in business. Yeah, no kidding. Nice. Huh? Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your time. Nice to meet you again, Busy. Likewise. Have a good one. Brian, thanks for calling in. Hey, Bruce, let's go to a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more. We're going to find out about this crazy van. We're going to find out more <laughs> about the, uh, the uh, OE involvement. we got a lot of stuff. Stay tuned. Speed Scene Live. Wagner host of Pastime, SpeedSceneRacing.com, Speed Scene Live, are you kidding me? At Aeromotive, we believe that performance means reliability, longevity, and durability. Being the best is no secret. By utilizing aerospace processes, procedures, technology, in-house engineering, true applications knowledge, and three generations of track experience, it's easy to see why we're the best. We take great pride in the fact that everything we sell, we design and make in the USA. See our entire line of fuel pumps and related products by logging on to AeromotiveInc.com. Aeromotive. We know it. We race it. We live it. M&H Tires, makers of racing tires that give you the best bite for the buck. You've paid a lot for that horsepower. Make sure you use it all. M&H Tires has the best compounds available for maximum traction. 
go to mandhtires.com. That's mandhtires.com. Buy direct and save at the website and mention the speed scene for a 5% discount. That's right, mandhtires.com. Call them at 661 324 4773. M&H Tires has tech guys ready to answer your questions or to recommend the best tire for you. Slicks or DOT, M&H Tires has it all. M&H were the first to create racing tires for muscle cars and also the first to create racing tires for sport compact cars. Legendary M&H Tires. Shop online, mention the speed scene, and save 5%. Get the best racing tires Great personal service and save 5%. Go to mandhtires.com or call them at 661-324-4773. mandhtires.com. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFault.com. Here we go, Speed Scene Live, the sequel. It's part two of tonight's show. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Bruce Barker. That would be Lucky Hudson. We're cranking it out here. We've got BC and Hedy live in studio. And, of course, Hot Rod Bob Beck. He'll be uh, talking <laughs> in a little bit about the Edelbrock Car Show Coming up this weekend, right? This weekend, yes, we're oh, going to be there. And nice. that's a good one, too. Now, uh, BC, let me talk to you a little bit about, because you're a power guy. Your yes, whole sir. your whole existence, <laughs> your whole reason to live power. is to make power. Yes, sir. And an important thing, especially, even more especially important with a smaller motor running a lot of RPM, is motor oil. Absolutely. And I noticed that you're involved with a company called Pure All Motor Oil. Tell us a little bit about that involvement. Sure. Uh, once again, as Hedy alluded to earlier, the model of Beast Motor Engineering is reliable, power guaranteed, and I'm a huge advocate of reliability. If you, you can make all the power in the world, but if it's not reliable, as far as I'm concerned, it's useless. So, Pure Oil is a company that actually came to us as a customer. Um, some organizations send us components to test and provide real world feedback. And uh, this particular organization came to us to test their lubricants, which is based in aerospace versus other commercially available mm. lubricants. And I did the test. And once again, when the, when, the, when the buckets came to me, they are unlabeled, have alphanumeric nomenclature on them. I had this one compound that I tested, and I had to know what it was. It, it, it blew everything out of the water in terms mm. of power, in terms of sheer stability, and cooling capability as well. So that being said, I had the opportunity to uh, reach out to an organization and ask them for what compound it was. They didn't give me the time of day. They were just curious about the results and data. And so I sicked Hetty on them <laughs> to find out what she could do to get me some of this. Because as a racer, I want a competitive advantage. I want that advantage. And, and this compound was just absolutely amazing. Better than anything I've, I've ever used or anything I've ever seen. Now, is it synthetic or is it uh, dino base? Pure synthetic. Wow. Dino synthetic. base. And um, the base stocks, from what I've seen, um, um, comprise of Group 4 and Group 5 base stocks. And the added package is, is it's out of control. As a, matter of, as a matter of fact, it becomes painfully obvious for me that they're probably giving us lubricants from the aerospace industry that they use. Okay. Because uh, as I spoke to the engineers there, they shared with me that what we use in automotive is quite dated, and they use really high, highly advanced components hmm. or, 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 or uh, compounds in aerospace. They see a lot more heat and friction than we see in automotive engines. Well, and you do a lot of turbo and, and, oh, yeah. and, and yeah, uh, engines that create high heat. Oh, yes. So uh, this is a, an important factor. Absolutely. Now, what are the weight ratings of the oil? Well, what they have currently available for the automotive market is um, a 020, which is very popular for the newer generation and you know, high, you know, small displacement hybrid engines. Um, they have a 530, which is very common in the sport compact market, uh, 1040, which is extremely important and very common in the European market, and 2050, that's very popular with my Corvette guys. Mm -hmm. So that being said, um, that's the full gamut they have now in terms of um, um, synthetic. They also have an organic-based break-in oil, which they just launched recently, which has been absolutely fantastic as well. So this company, they they know what's going on. They're good. They're okay, good. I've seen the logo now. That Now I, I, I'm somewhat familiar with the company. Now, they were... were pretty uh, involved in, in sports car racing. Absolutely. 
absolutely. So that, it, that's where I've seen that logo before. And now, Henny, was this a difficult company to deal with? You, you, you know, uh, BC mentioned he sent you after him and got <laughs> you to take care of business. And so, what was it like dealing with sure. them? Sure. You know, the thing was is that they were very secretive about their compound, very secretive about eat going to market and I literally I felt like I was a stalker I mean I called my <laughs> I called my rep probably every other day just to bug and say hey can we buy this stuff can we use this stuff because with once again going back to our single over cam all motor naturally aspirated drag racing three to four horsepower is a lot I mean you it, it's a lot in our world because we're naturally aspirated so to pick up 12 wheel horsepower over mm. a full sin oil that we were using that costed about $25 a quart we were like oh my wow. goodness this is amazing stuff and what's funny about it is that finally they broke down and said okay you know I'll give you information let's get involved and I did get involved with them I don't want to tell you the whole mafia story behind it <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for another episode of how that came about which was ridiculous but nonetheless um, I, I actually do um, endorse the brand I feel that it is a an excellent product a lot of racers are using it they're breaking records their their engine temp I mean they cannot it's so funny because they're like my engine degree temps with my you know my dirt track or circle track guys are they're decreasing about 60 degrees Fahrenheit which wow. is a lot yes that's huge it's huge I have a Polaris team um, that recently reached out to me and was like Hedy guess what because I convinced him to use it and he said I can't believe it before we would have to fill this oil every event we would have to drain and then refill and go ahead and you know switch their oil out with this one they can go every other event now they're trying to stretch every other other event oh, okay. it's caught i mean saving them thousands of dollars and they love it um and people are my the hybrid guys are calling me that i've recommended it to they're like i'm getting better gas mileage you know so it's like a, it's a win-win for everybody you say polaris is that like the off-road vehicles yes yes yeah, sir yeah. yes yeah. sir well wow. And and the funny thing about it too is like it's it's such it's one it's like a, a the genius of oils you know right it's like the straight A accolades AP I mean it's great for hybrid vehicles it gets better gas mileage it's great for high horsepower vehicles keeps your engine you know the turbo cars keeps you, their engine you know you're talking about genius and that me that makes me lead up to Hot Rod Bob Beck because <laughs> ah. you know I, I immediately got a segue to Bob because you know Bob is sort of a, a genius in the world of cars. In, in his own special mm -hmm. way. Yes, I'm a mental midget. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so, uh, Bob, you are going to be out in an event this coming weekend yes. at uh, the uh, at Vic's Garage. At Vic's Garage. Good evening, everybody. Hi, I'm Hot Rod Bob Beck, and you've got gas on Speed Scene Live. With us tonight is Eric Blakely from Edelbrock, and we're going to talk about a great show. that It's a charity show that the Edelbrock Foundation puts on. Eric, how you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? We are doing great. Tell us a little bit about this show. I know it's the tenth year of the show. Yeah, it's been a it's been an exciting run. I've been actually with the company uh, long enough to go through all ten years. So it's mm. it's been neat to see the show grow from you know a really small show. I think our first year we had sixty cars. Wow. You know, and now we've grown it up to you know we're looking at about two hundred pre registered, and we're looking at maybe a hundred to one hundred fifty more day of show. So it's really the show's grown, and it's also we had to kind of change locations because of that growth. So it's really? been it's been exciting, definitely. Oh, you changed look. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember that when I come down there ah. Saturday morning. Um, <laughs> so, but you know, we're showing some of the vehicles that have been out there. This is from the past shows. We got Jess Tyree, the uh, Super Stock, and Pro Mod. Uh, well, I guess Pro Mod, but the uh, Super Stock. Uh, Legend, B, B, B gas, uh, B -gas transitioning runs, into A yeah. gas. Yeah, and he's you know he's seventy some odd years old. He came out with his car. I know you had a bunch of Cackle Fest cars at one point in time. Vic's personal garage was open at the Absolutely. last time I was there. It will so be again. Going. Good, oh. you get to see uh, Vic's cars and the history, including his dad's uh, thirty-two Roadster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, that's one thing we really enjoy about our show. It's a really diverse show, and we get everything from late model uh, muscle cars and trucks to, you know, roadsters, street rods. And like you guys said, we get some unique race cars that kind of just happen to show up. Now, this is a charity show. What is the charity that you guys do? Uh, the charity is the Edelbrock Family Foundation. And uh, this is a, a foundation that Vic Edelbrock, Christy Edelbrock, and Nancy Edelbrock started about two or three years ago. I think mm -hmm. we're coming up in year three now. And uh, the sole purpose of this foundation is to just to, to raise money to 
to engage the youth and, and make sure that we've got youth backfilling this industry of ours. And, and, and from every level, you know, we, you know, as, as us guys who love this kind of stuff get older, we want to make sure there's kids that are coming in this industry from every level, from mechanics to marketing guys to salesmen to, you know, manufacturers, you know. So they're just, they're, they've created this program to, to, you know, and essentially want to hand out scholarships and find ways to get youth back into our industry. Now, one of the things you also do in the last couple of years that I've noticed was the engine building contest that goes on in the parking lot. Yeah, the Hot Riders of Tomorrow Engine Challenge is a really neat, really neat contest. I mean, it's it's an opportunity, again, for, you know, auto shop programs to not just go into the shop and tear down a motor and build it up or, you know, work on a car that may not hit the road. You know, a lot of these kids, it's, it's, it's actually brought a competitive level and made a sport out of an automotive uh, hobby, essentially. And it's great to watch these kids tear down these motors. I mean, they take a small block and they tear it down and put it back together. And I think the record time was like 21 minutes. I mean, it's... It's just, it's wild to watch, and it's really great. And then, and the Edelbrock family has been involved with Hot Rodders since the beginning as well, because it's just a great program to, uh, again, get these kids familiarized with our industry from the manufacturer side, because each team is sponsored by a manufacturer. And then the winners actually go on to the PRI show and compete in a, in a full-on tournament at the end to get one winner. Well, now, th- there's no slouching on this one. They actually get checked all along the way to make sure the engine's going back correctly. Is that, cor- is that right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's time-driven, but at the same time, there's penalties for loose bolts, for um, incorrect torque sequences. Like, all of that stuff is taken into account, and when there's judges actually watching the kids tear down and put back together, and they are critiqued on all that, and then time is eliminated by points. And so it's, yeah, it's not just about doing as fast as you can, it's about being as accurate as you can as well. All right, now, besides that, you've also got that, if I remember correctly, looking on the schedule, there's tours of your facility. Oh, uh, yeah, that was actually Friday. We had to move oh. those to Friday. So those are the day, the day before um, the event, just because of the logistics of, of having people in our facility, because that's, that's at our corporate facility. Right. And then the show is actually at Vic's Garage, which is a couple of blocks over. Um, but, yeah, we do that. And those are really great, too. I mean, it's a, we, we're not afraid to show people what we do, and we're really proud about the products we make in the USA. And so it's a great opportunity to, to bring people through and show them the complete process from the R&D department to the rapid prototypes to fitting prototypes on real vehicles, dyno testing, machining of the part, and even in, yeah, back to my guys in advertising and show that we, you know, here we actually create all the ads and the marketing campaigns and just to kind of show the depth of the company. Yeah, I was, I was lucky. Uh, my car club came down on a separate day and Vic gave us the tour. And it was just uh-huh. amazing to see what was going on there. And to tell you how far back it was was when you guys made shock absorbers there. Oh yeah, that was a while back. Yeah, it was a while back. But you know, I'm watching the guy. I'm watching your machines do a cylinder head from a raw casting. Which again, you own the foundry. Absolutely, so, we are, our foundry is located about 90 miles east of this location um, in Torrance. But it's it's just you know it's a great experience for anybody. We get a lot of compliments. We've been doing it for years, and it's just great. Like I said, we're we're an open door policy. We want people to see all the hard work that goes into the parts that we sell. You know, and it's. And it's just validating why the parts are as good as they are and also validating, you know, essentially the price. I mean, it's, we hate to have, to have to do that, but we want to show the quality. I mean, every part that leaves our facility is quality control checked. Um, even in porosity, they even check at the foundry, the metal thickness, stuff like that. So that's really, we just want everybody to know that. There's a lot of blood and sweat that goes into each one yeah. of those parts. I remember I took the tour one time and you were still carving your your pieces out of wood and fitting them and trying to make them and then the last time i was there you actually had one of the uh printers yeah we actually have two of them now oh, two um, we have two wow. rapid prototypers and those have just been a huge i mean that, that has pushed our industry and and it's it's helped for us it's helped speed up the, the uh, r&d time because we can actually take a rapid prototype of a intake manifold and we can actually run that on an engine on the dyno to get that initial flow test and make sure we're going down the right path um so it's great for that, you know, where before we'd have to, like you said, create a wood pattern, get a, a pilot casting run of 10, 15 castings, and if it didn't work out, back to the drawing board. But well, now, at least the plastic one, you can put it on, bolt the carburetor to it, run just regular gasoline, um, and then you, right away you know if you're in the, going the right direction or if you have to go back and, and adjust things and then make another prototype if you need to. All right, did, now, did you make that second 3D printer with the first 3D printer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wish we could. It would be a lot cheaper. Yeah, probably would have been. All right, so now that you said the show is moved. It's, Vic, it's Vic's Garage now. Now, that it, I, I'm trying to remember, and I'm thinking that's about where I was parked last year. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, it, it, it moved, uh, I think, with the first three years we did it, we did it actually in downtown Torrance, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a small, historical, little, you know, kind of your typical downtown, and we quickly outgrew that. And so that can only support 
I think 120 vehicles. So once we mm-hmm. reach that cap, for the last I want to say six or seven years, we've been at the, where we're at now, which is Vic's Garage. Okay, so that's the same place I've been. Now, what time does it open to the public? Opens at 9 a.m. Um, that's when the Hot Riders of tomorrow will start doing their first round, and then. Uh, this, and then it goes until 4 o'clock with our award ceremony at 3.30. All right. And uh, what is the address, and where can they find more information? You know what? I don't have that in front of me. If they go to our <laughs> website, if you go to edelbrock.com forward slash car show, um, uh-huh. they'll take you right to the page. It has all the information on. We've got a Google map that will take you right to where you need to go. And it has information also, too, on day of show registration, which we're still taking Good. and accepting. Um, and it kind of gives you a little rundown, too, of all the uh, entertainment we'll have going on as well. Good. Yeah, and there will be some vendor booths there. I know I'm going to be there working for uh, at the AAA booth, so stop by and say hi. I know there will be others there. You've got raffles. You've got great shows, great cars to see. And, uh, Absolutely. There's some really, that's one thing I like the most about our show and is that we have such a diverse, you know, as Edelbrock as well. You know, in, in the last four or five years, we've gotten into late model superchargers, and so it's neat to see that that wide selection of vehicles. And it really just kind of it plays to everybody's, you know, everybody's, I guess everybody's drug of choice in our industry, you know what I mean? From yep. late models to street rods and muscle cars and even some unique special vehicles that'll show up. Yeah, I saw uh, Vic's car after you, his Corvette after you put the supercharger on that, and I was warned to to bring a parachute because it flies. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he's got a new one now, too. He's got a uh, 2015 uh, convertible that, that's got a supercharger on it, and it's, oh. yeah, it's a... It's definitely it's it's a fun ride. That's a rocket ship. All right, so everyone, come on over Saturday. Is now to come in for the uh, the tour on Friday. Do you have to have reservations for that? Yes, unfortunately we do um, because it's cool. We can only do so many tours in a day, so Mm -hmm. uh, those are by reservation only. And they're actually we're all I think we finished booking on those last week. So yeah, those are all. So those are out. But come Saturday. But if people want to take a tour, we we do tours all throughout the year. Oh um, good. And that's one thing they can call in, and if they're in the area, definitely. call in and and we can arrange for somebody to jump onto a current tour or we'll make a tour for you all right that's great and i know like you guys that opened it up for uh, my car club and we came through there and it, it was an amazing event dave mcclellan uh, is probably going to be there as usual love dave i don't know we've uh, you know we know it's kind of tough being in, in the la area we haven't really lined up a lot of celebrities this year and you just never know who's going to show up i know in past years gene winfield will just show up yeah. uh ed Iskadarian. Yeah. Um, Dave McClellan, we've had uh, Rich Evans, um, Chip Foose. You know, you just never mm-hmm. know. It's kind of, you know, a lot of people got busy schedules this time of year, so we, we couldn't really solidify anybody for sure, but you never know who's going to show up. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. We'll see you on Saturday. Hopefully, everyone will come down to Ella Rock. It's absolutely free to spectators. Isn't that right? Absolutely. You bet. All right. So come on in. It's a, it's a car show. It takes up three streets all the way around Vic's Garage the cul-de-sac, the parking lots of the other businesses in the area. I mean, you, you just closed down that whole area with hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trick trucks, and more. Yeah, we do. We pretty much just take over. Luckily, it's a commercial area, but yeah, we pretty much just take it over for a good eight hours. All right, great. So we'll look forward to seeing everybody there on Saturday. I do appreciate you calling in, Eric. Have a good evening. And uh, did your boss let you off early so you can make the call? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, see, it worked. <laughs> Eric, thanks so much for calling in. Hey, thank you, guys. Together. All right. You know, BC, I know that you do a lot of events, uh, not just drag racing, but you do a lot of promotional type events, and you go to different places promoting uh, not just your company, but also your sponsors. What are some of the other sponsors that you're involved with? Well, you know what? Um, that's a great question. I have some great organizations that I partner with, individuals that really have the same passion as us in BC Engineering around motorsports. One is AEM Electronics, a great team of engineers people who really have so much passion around engine management solutions and being able to determine safety protocols for different type of racing and and for street applications as well and turbonetics my goodness what a great organization they do a lot of military stuff and if it's good enough for the u.s government it's good enough for my cause quality turbochargers i've had nothing but success with those individuals so that being said those are some of the companies that i partner with that are fantastic and have the same passion that we have in terms of making reliable power now, when you were talking about power, and we mentioned it, or, you, or Hedy, I think you mentioned at the beginning of the show, that you actually took a minivan and turned it up, so to speak. What's the story behind this minivan? Well, we work with a lot of OE manufacturers, corporate companies such as Honda, Hyundai, um, Jaguar, 
you name it. And when we expanded our family, we decided, hey, we need a car to get us from point A to point B as quickly as possible. So, hmm, let's try swooping up a minivan. And so yeah. here we are. <laughs> and now it looks totally stuck. You got the Yakima rack on the top. I mean, it, maybe it's lowered a little bit, but... A it, little? It, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't look... I don't see giant tires well, or... You know, that's the thing. It's a sleeper. So we have airbags. You can slam it, do burnouts. But the really cool stuff about what we've incorporated into our 2014 Honda Odyssey minivan is a lot of technology that one cannot see. And that's really what our company is about. I mean, we literally take apart and put together our engines three or four times. We figure things out. Um, we tra- we actually converted this um Honda Odyssey to a manual conversion, which is unheard of, to hold the thousand horsepower um, uh, motor or engine that we built at our facility. We sleep the engine, we upgraded our camshafts, custom pistons, custom rods. Did you say? Did you say 1,000 horsepower? Yeah, it's actually 1029. I was conservative. Oh, so wow. <laughs> uh, if you want to see more about it, it, it was actually featured on Top Gear um, on Ooh. the History Channel. Yes, Rutledge drove the car. It made him throw up, number one. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, that is he went, great. He accelerated. That is and great. The, the great thing about it, though, is that the producer called me at the end of the show. And, he, and I answered the phone. And he goes, um, Hetty? I go, yes. He goes, I can't believe this minivan. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. nonchalant. And he goes, we tried to blow up your car. I go, excuse me? <laughs> we tried to blow up your minivan, but it just wouldn't go. And I said, well, you know, then, of course, now my head gets big. And I said, well, reliable power guaranteed. You can't blow it up. It's yeah. solid. <laughs> <That>. <laughs> they did burnouts. They went to, um, what was that? Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak. Pikes. They took it through. A, they really they, they beat it. They yeah. beat this poor van up. And, you know, at the end of the day, we still beat it up. We took it up to Mount Baldy. There's an episode on the smoking tire with Matt Farah on Drive mm. TV. That he has driving impressions of both our minivan and our 911 twin turbo Porsche that he drove, which was a blast. So, Wow. Cool you know, stuff. I, That's I, a grocery I, getter. I could handle that. I, <laughs> I love a car like this, and I love the fact that it, 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 it was so much power it made him throw up. You know, Because <laughs> you know, every race car driver yeah, knows you get that little yeah. uh, queasiness in your stomach sometimes, you know, but you get used to it quickly. Uh, but if you take a guy that's not used to driving a car and he looks at it and goes, oh, I can drive a minivan, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, that's great. Now, what <laughs> other type of... Uh, uh, original equipment or, 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 you know, car manufacturing companies are you involved with? We're involved with Hyundai. We built a thousand horsepower Hyundai Genesis that actually, it's the world's fastest Hyundai Genesis on the planet in terms of running a half mile. Uh, we, we actually ran a half mile airstrip attack and it did uh, extremely well. Um, we It's so weird because I think we're kind of geeks inside, but we're also kind of like into cars. And then we also love to improve whether it's within ourselves or within our business or within the company. And so that kind of drives us. Us, and it just happened to be the fact that we love cars, so that's where our energy is focused towards. So um, we, we we work with anything. It's really weird where we work with anything. Somebody may say, you know, a manufacturer may come and go, hey, you know, I have this old school, I don't know, old school air-cooled VW something mm-hmm. um, in the garage. And we want to incorporate our newest technology, Canva stuff, drive-by wire. We want to incorporate... The, touch, you know, Bluetooth, you want to incorporate all this crazy stuff. Can you revive this utilizing our new technology? And 9.5 out of 10 times, we'll say yes, and we can improve upon it. So we're very proud, and we hang our hats on the ability to do that. And, and one of the, mentioning old school, I think there's like a uh, uh, 1970s era Porsche 911 that you've been involved with a lot? Absolutely. So we have a 1976 911 air-cooled blue Porsche. Um, we love the vehicle chassis. First, as, as a racer, as BC would look at it, he'd go, hey, this is way lighter. 
oh, okay, that makes sense, right? He's into coefficient drag and weight, so we're like, okay, makes sense as a drag racer. So we chose the chassis, and we really loved the the body lines of the vehicle. Wanted to keep it really. It, it was very beautiful. It's a classic platform. It, it's a classic platform, yeah. somewhat of as domestic guys like yourself would say, hey, it's a hot rod, you know, yeah. we love it, it's yeah. beautiful. And so we took that chassis, and I hate to say this, but I'm gonna be very trans transparent, you know, the Porsche Pierce, I, we were just like, oh my gosh, they're just going to be super upset because how can you take a, an old school Porsche and not, you know, keep it the, the, that way and just, you know, refresh the motor and leave everything the way it's supposed to be period correct. And we're like, nah, we're just going to pull it out and put a, as BC mentioned early, impregnate a 3.6 <laughs> liter <laughs> twin turbo, uh, uh, M9, it's a 996 engine into it, so it's water cooled now. It's not air cooled. Oh, you okay. completely changed it. Yeah. Completely yeah. changed it. Um, and the great thing about it, as I mentioned before, the drive by wire technology, canvas technology, it's like a brand new motor with all the cool features of a new car in an old school chassis. Yeah, you keep the coolness. Of, right? of the 70s yeah. Porsche. Right. You know, and I can see there's, you know, some bigger wheels, some right. flares just and to, stuff. Just to make it look cool, but it's, I mean, it's a true hot rod. And and in our in our world, it's a true hot rod, um, meaning that it's just, it's super cool. It's super fast. It's really light. It's torquey. And if you watch once again, I'm, I'll, I'll let you know, Matt Farah, he drove the car and he's like, this is like a go-kart. It's the scariest car he's ever driven. <laughs> and believe it or not he didn't go full throttle so you, know, uh, you didn't hear that from me <laughs> you know that really what you're doing is you're you're uh you're repeating a tradition of hot rodders that Absolutely. goes back to the 30s guys taking Absolutely. uh 32 ford roadsters and putting lincoln transmissions Absolutely. And, and you know i mean that's what people have done forever so for a guy to say oh that's not you know i'm a purist right forget about yeah. it man you're making it better and, and bc Absolutely. you you put a lot of thought into it I'm sure, before you went to all that trouble. Absolutely. I'm a huge advocate of new technology. And as Hedy mentioned before, I love the beautiful classic lines of the Porsche, but I'm also an advocate of what's new and what's hot. And think of it as the pro-touring of the European world. That's mm -hmm. pretty much what we're doing, and that's very popular in the domestic scene, pro-touring. Just retain the beautiful classic you know, lines of an older car and just making, as far as I'm concerned, much better. Look at the yeah. cage in that thing. Yeah, the cage, it disappears when you shut the door. Yeah, but I mean, did you put a canary in there and stop putting bars in and, <laughs> and get out? I mean, that, that's, that's got some hefty bars there on Thank the you. side. Thank you. You need it for the kind of part. Our fabricators are really this. talented. We, 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 we actually TIG weld all of our all of our cages, believe it or not, as opposed to MIG welding them. So we pay attention to every little detail when it comes to building our cars. So now that's a very popular car in the road racing circles, and you just improved it. And like you said, pro touring. Most of the guys here in the states they they look at pro touring as a Firebird, Mustang, right. Camaro, but you've done it to a car that already started out well above those and made it even better. That's took what we it, feel. Took that's it to the next level. Yes, sir. And so you get all the power, you get the insane amount of of, of torque and horsepower, yet you can drive it all day. And it doesn't overheat, and you can you can drive it, you know, somewhere and get a hamburger and drive it back, and you're not burning race gas. <laughs> and by the time you get back, the hamburger's still hot. Yeah. 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 Let's let's take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more to uh, about bcmoto.com and uh, what is it you call reliable power guaranteed? I think that's a nice slogan. We'll be back right after this. I'm Tom Mongoose McCune, and you're watching Speed Scene Live. Take your vehicle's racing performance to an all-new level with a custom racing engine from Paul Williams Specialties. Put PWS's 30-plus years of experience to work on your race car, muscle car, any type of high-performance engine. PWS can build your winning combination from scratch or refresh and improve your current engine. Working on a project? Don't waste money through trial and error. Consult with Paul Williams first. Wrap up your performance with Paul Williams Specialties. Helping championship-level drivers become champions through better performance and reliability. For over half a century, Curry rear-end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. Some of the world's most capable, hardest-working vehicles depend on Curry gears, which is why you can too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock-crawling four-wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock-solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installations 
construction options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra-strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts, like correct link steering systems, keep your four-wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid, purpose-built suspension and brake components, and you've got one tough, ready-to-go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry Rear End. Talk to the experts at 714-367-2679 or view the complete line online at curryenterprises.com. that has served to defend our great country and our freedom. All of us here in the United States of America would like to offer our sincere appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done. To every family that has made a sacrifice for us, we thank you. Sixty years. That's a long time for a company to do any one thing. Doing it right while sticking to your founding values. Now that takes hard work and dedication. For 60 years, Hedman's All-American Workforce has been devoted to manufacturing the very best headers any team of craftsmen can build. That's 60 years of cutting. 60 years of bending. 60 years of welding. More than two million in all and every set made right here at home. At Hedman Headers, we build all American horsepower, then back it up for life. Hedman Headers. I'm Gary Selzy, and you're watching USA. Speed Scene Live. Hi, I'm Dominic Selzy, and you're watching Speed Scene Live. Hi, my name's Giovanni Selzy, and you're watching Speed Scene Live, and my dad's all washed up. What? <laughs> Seen Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, M&H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheVote.com. Welcome back to the show, Speed Seen Live, the fastest show on the net. I'm Lucky, there's Bruce, there's Bob. We've got Hedy and BC live in studio tonight talking about BC <laughs> Moto. And, you know, it's a great story because they've created a company where you can take any car. It doesn't matter if it's import, domestic, VW, Porsche, a Lamborghini. You bring it, you drive it in, you drop it off, they'll call you up and they'll let you know when it's done. It's a full-service company. They can take care of everything. You pick it up and you go out and you have fun with it. Is, is that, Hedy, is that an accurate thing to say? Yes. <laughs> well, it, what's what's great about it is that, I, and I have to really reiterate this, we love weird and quirky things. We don't like the... the you like a the, challenge. We do, you know, because we've done so much. And we're, you know, if somebody comes in with like a, a Nova and they're like, hey, I want to build a Bonneville flat, salt flat car. Can you make, you know, maybe a 1200 horsepower? We may say yes, we may say no. We'd have to look at and explore. But, we, but most likely we'd be able to crank something out for the for the end user. So we love what we do. We're passionate about it. And we, it, it even excites us more when the owner or the driver picks up the car and they look at it and they go wow i can't believe it you know we we, we actually under promise and over deliver really oh, that's and, and that's really the do. best way to do it that's definitely the best way it's to hard do to it. find that nowadays with companies it is really and, and you know the successful companies do that because that's what people like because nobody expects it they're used to getting over promised and under delivered right. so when they when you do what you say and more it really gets people's attention. Now, we mentioned your website, bzmoto.com. I think there's a link to your Instagram on bzmoto.com, oh, right? absolutely, yes. So if you want the latest know-hows or tech tips and whatnot, you can follow BC. It's at 
BC Moto, which is B-I-S-I-M-O-T-O. If you want cool cars and pictures, you can follow me, which is at Hedy Moto, which is oh, <laughs> which is H E D I M O T O. The and better stuff's on yours. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I go to a bunch of car shows. I love exotics. I you know I network and I post cool pictures of rare like Enzo Ferraris or La Ferrari mm. or stuff like that. So. Um, we, it's really it's really awesome. Now, uh, uh, BC, I, I'm on the photo.com. I'm getting crew updates. People want to know where are you going to be next? Where can they go? Uh, what's your schedule? Where can they see you live in person? Actually, um, I'm very good at putting things up on my Instagram because it gives my fans up-to-date information on what events I'm going to. Right now, I'm working on two very very important and secretive projects. Mm. You can't tell us. Yeah, I can't, you can't tell us. I can't tell you what it is quite yet. But the people but, uh, can follow your Instagram. On Instagram they will yeah. definitely see what yeah. it was about. He's great <laughs> at leaking photos and pictures. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten our hands slapped a couple of times. Oh. So. <laughs> so the guys in the black suits and the black ties are standing outside your door right yeah, now. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here's a Porsche you're working on now. I'm looking at the dyno that you've got yes. there. That's bolting up to the hubs. That is correct. Is yeah, that, no no tires involved. Yes, yeah. it's a, a Dynapack dyno, and it removes the tire interface and all the variables that come with that from the equation. Mm -hmm. And it's very important for me, especially with high-horsepower cars, because I don't have any slippage whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's also equally important for low-horsepower cars because it's very sensitive. I can see a two-horsepower. I can turn the headlights on and see a change in the dyno Ooh. chart. So it's, ex it's extremely quiet, it's extremely reliable, and it's something that, that I use in the house. It's a very expensive dyno, but for what we do, it's extremely worth it. And it's great, too, because you can do partial throttle tuning. I mean, we've noticed with our with our track cars, when, when you go to a traditional dyno and you strap the tires down a certain way, and the tires create friction or heat, we notice horsepower differences, load ratings would change things. This is the closest thing to an engine dyno that you, you'd find mm. within the conf confinements of a chassis. So. And you know, it's interesting, I learned uh, just recently Recently, that a lot of times the chassis dyno will kill your tires Absolutely. because you're strapping them down, you're compressing mm -hmm. them, now you're getting them hot, you're running them, uh, and by the time you're done, those tires are no good. Absolutely. Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff about BC Moto, and I can remember years back when <laughs> you were famous for headers. Yes. You were the go to guy for headers, and you know, meanwhile, you're racing, you're promoting your sponsors, you're out there running your car. And uh, I just, it's great to see the growth and the sustainability in the industry and the fact that you guys are out there, you're, you're delivering reliable horsepower guaranteed. That's really good. And uh, you're a big crowd favorite. You were at the uh, Match Race Madness uh, a little recently. Yes. And, uh, Man, it was a great, great deal. I think you had some, something didn't go right that day, though. Something broke, and, uh, you know, kind of like last time I was there, I made two passes, getting ready to race, transmission went out. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had a great com uh, competitor to race against. We were both in 66 Chevy Novas. Wow. Couldn't finish the race. But, you know, that stuff happens. Right. I'll be at the next one, which happens to be in August, by the way. Oh, awesome. Yes, yeah, so we plan on being at that one as well. Yeah, last time I had a drivetrain component fell on me as well. That's what happens when we make a lot of power and have a lot of slicks and whatnot. But yeah. the one in August, we plan on being there, putting on a great show and really representing the import camp. Right, and we never forget where we come from. I mean, we're passionate, we love what we do, and from there it stems our wanting to, though we work with you know movies and manufacturers and film and commercials and white collar stuff, we'll never forget where we came from, which is the true passion of, of loving what we do, this including driving a, a thousand, <laughs> this is a thousand four horsepower Civic yeah. Uvil for Honda which on I the street. Be, I shouldn't be putting that on the street. With the way. parachute, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. parachute is a giveaway. That's yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of risque. At the, I guess at if a cop time. behind you, if you pop the chute, it maybe might they get can him, yeah. deter him a little bit and just You'll blind him enough, <laughs> you can get away. I don't know. <laughs> but now it's probably. I mean, it it could still be street legal. Absolutely, because yeah. I do have a couple of vehicles that are street legal that have parachutes because. When we're doing more of the, you know, which is a, it's almost like drag racing now, but we're doing a lot of the half mile runs. Mm -hmm. You need it. You need to stop because those brakes sometimes cannot do the job. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, we're coming up to the top of the hour, and uh, bcmoto.com is where you can find out what's going on. Bob, you yep. are going to be out in the lovely city of uh, Torrance. Torrance. I'll be at Edelbrock on Saturday, and then Paris at the Antique Truck Show on Sunday. Ooh, nice. Yeah. That's
that's going to be interesting. That's a good weekend. And uh, don't forget, we've got Match Race Madness coming up in, uh, sometime in August. And uh, we were going to have Steve Sherman tell us about it, but we'll catch him another day. And I do want to mention that May 15th through the 17th, Eagle Field has a three-day event. So we're going to be up there with that event. Nostalgic Eagle Field. Mm -hmm. We're going back in time, you know. Uh, We're going to get flag starters, hay bales for guardrail. Well, I don't know. I I guess I should go up there and find out first. Rocky's got his twin engine car going to be ready with a fresh body. Wow. 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 Nice. Nice. So Get TV uh, Tommy Ivo in one of those four engine cars and we're set. There we go. Hetty, BC, thank you so much for coming and being on Speed Scene Live. Thank you. What a pleasure. It's it's great being here. Thank you. It's a great story about bcmoto.com. Check out their website. Follow them on Instagram. And uh, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, coming up next, the encore presentation of the show. You're watching the end of right now. I think I just ended that sentence with some sort of a preposition. Uh-huh. Thanks for joining us for Speed Scene Live this week. We're back in one week right here at SpeedScenelive.com. Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, m h Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFolk.com. 